I predominantly teach uh, MBA students, and these are students who typically have four or five years business experience when they come to us. And the subject I teach is management. I teach in the, in the broad management area and specifically strategic management, which is how firms compete with each other and how firms develop strategies for competitive markets. The students we have are fairly busy. They have a lot of modules to cover. So the first thing I try to provide is a lot of structure to the module. And that structure, I think, provides a lot of comfort to them. They're coming into a fairly uncertain environment and they want to know what's happening and when it's happening and how it's happening. So in designing the module, I tried to produce a very detailed course outline. And roughly the detail is about 18 to 20 pages. And what I'm basically trying to do is create a contract with the students. And so in that contract, what I want to clearly communicate are my expectations of them. But I also want to clearly communicate the structure of the module. And what I mean by structure, I mean the learning objectives, how those learning objectives will be achieved, and how I'll assess those learning objectives. So in the first element, naturally, the learning objectives for the module as, as a whole are clearly identified. But in addition to that, I try to identify the learning objectives for each individual session. So it's very clear what each individual session's objective is. Secondly, in terms of structure, what I try to do is for each individual session, I try to identify clearly what the materials are that are required to be read, any additional materials, which might be extra reading. I teach by the case method. So for every session, there's a case. I identify what the case is and I identify some preparatory questions that should be th thought about as the participants are engaging with the material. And finally, on assessment, I try to be very clear in assessment in, in terms of what the assessment is, why the assessment is, why that form of assessment is being chosen. In other words, how the assessment contributes to the learning outcomes. And finally, how I grade the assessment. What am I looking for? in terms of the detailed specifications, both of the, of the project itself or of the assignment, but also what discriminates an A grade from a B grade, from a C grade, from a D grade. In other words, in, in fairly fine detail, what am I expecting from the students and what do they have to deliver to get the various grades? So I have little rubrics around each of those letters, which I draw from the, the university rubrics for assessment. I think I try to take a participant-centered approach in the sense that I don't feel I'm just there to transmit knowledge. I, I feel I'm there to help co-create knowledge with the students. So in the first class, what I try to do is I try to create a, a community. And what I want to do is I want to get them enthusiastic about the subject. So, and how I try to do that is I try to engage them early on. So before presenting the course outline to them, I basically ask them an open-ended question, which is what contributes to a great module in their experience? So we go through and we form them into groups and we ask them to describe the ingredients in their experience of what contributed to a great module. And we get the list out and we try to identify, you know, what the features of a great module are. And we try to create a contract with the students that says, okay, these are the ingredients in your experience that contribute to a great module. Now, how do we translate those ingredients into our module to ensure that this is a great experience for you? A couple of things that I do to sort of think about how I teach and think about, you know, the effectiveness of, of my teaching. I think that the first thing is I, I keep a little diary. And uh, so at the end of every module and at the end of every session of every module, I think back immediately and think about what worked in, in that session, what didn't work. Did the materials engage the students? Did the materials turn the students off? Was there too much material or too little? So at the end of every module, I try to capture what the reaction was of the students to the material and what the reaction was to how I, how I approach the material. And I use that in the planning of the course the next time. So I, I look back all the time at, at what worked and what didn't work. And the other thing I do is I'm, I'm always on the lookout for, for good teaching materials, perhaps some other disciplines or other approaches. And certainly one book that I've come across is entitled What the Best College Teachers Do. And uh, that's really informed me about, you know, different approaches to, to teaching and certainly helps me think about how do I up my game so that, you know, students appreciate what's being done. <laughs>